Hi. Um, I'll tell you about backfeed and proof of value. Um, so let's just start. We have 15 minutes and very simple um, plan. So I'll tell you about decentralized decision making or decentralized governance, um, speci more specifically about the backfit protocol for that purpose. And finally, um, some example, real example. Okay, so let me try to tell you about what backfit is with respect to what Ethereum is, which you're already uh, quite familiar with. So Ethereum or Ethereum blockchain is basically a machine to machine consensus protocol. By that, I mean that the cons consensus that let uh, many nodes distributed around the globe uh, connect and agree um, and exchange value, this consensus is basically triggered by algorithmic measurable uh, quantities, algorithmically quantifiable data, such as proof of work, proof of stake, etc. In essence, that makes a dis distributed computer which allows all those nodes in the network share uh, a state together. With respect to that, Backfeed protocol is basically a human-to-human -human, uh, consensus protocol. So it's again, it's a consensus protocol. It's in a, in a way from the same family, but now this consensus is based and triggered by um, information that is only quantifiable or measured, measurable by human, human beings. That makes a decentralized governance or decentralized decision making, and we'll, we'll, we'll look to, into it more in more details. And that basically makes a shared decision. In, in some somewhat different words, whereas Ethereum, in, in, in order to emphasize the difference between these two kind of protocols that comes together, um, they really address different questions. So the Ethereum blockchain addresses the question of let's have many, many nodes distributed around the globe. And let's ask, how can they agree about the state? Like, I, I do an action, I transfer some ethers to my friend, how everyone else will, do, will know about that? The Backfit Protocol is a, addressing a completely different question. You can imagine a million people are gathered in the same room, they all see the same data, the same information, when I say something, everybody hear me, so there is no question about what the state is. We all see the state. But still, these millions of people can ask a question, how do we share or distribute value or allocate resources, share that resources together in a decentralized way without any hierarchy or at least rigid hierarchy um, or, or, or centralized authority? The most powerful thing happens when you put them together. When you put them together, you just get what we call decentralized collaborative organization. This is the true decentralized network that we have in mind. So it's distributed in terms of geographically distributed, but it also has completely distributed governance. What this kind of machinery includes? It includes decentralized reputation system, a distributed value distribution, collaborative human curation, like decide what is better, what is worse, and collaborative decision making. Now let me emphasize one thing. Reputation systems uh, are being, have been in the space or you know, in, a, in a broader space for, for decades. The point is that every single reputation system so far is crucially relying on the fact that it sits on a centralized topology. Any reputation system, ranking system, that you will take as for today and put it on a decentralized network will miserably fail due to Sybil attacks. And I will argue today that we have built the first Sybil resilient reputation system for decentralized networks, which will be crucial for any possible decentralized interaction between human beings. It has many nice features. It has stigmergic coordination, which means indirect coordination. There is no need for agents to directly coordinate with each other. It, it, the, the coordination happens spontaneously, just like ants coordinate indirectly and make seemingly intelligent structures. It has economic incentive for good behavior, economic resilience, it has scalability, if you remember from Greg's talk, via compositionality and fractalization. It has a driving force into micro-alignment, which means every subset of the network is being driven into alignment and homogeneity 
whereas there is macro diversity and we get a diversity at the, at, at, the, at the network level or network of networks. With this kind of machinery, together with the blockchain, you can now imagine many, many um, gigantic networks, whether it's decentralized insurance, network of millions of people who insure each other without any centralized authority, decentralized startups, what it look like if millions of people will actually work on a project together with some decentralized collaborative platform, decentralized journalism of millions of free freelance um, uh, journalists that just post content, edit others' content, etc. decentralized Airbnb, search engine, and uh, even multiplayer games. And this is just a just a random list. So, so I won't get into the deep details of the protocol, as it won't fit in that time. But let me just give you some uh, some of the cracks of it. So, how how it becomes uh, cyber resi uh, resilience? The point is that ident identity in a decentralized network is nothing but the accumulation or the history of one's action. You are what you do. And if you don't do anything, from the network perspective, you are nothing. So Sybil, by definition, is nothing. And nothing means that he has no reputation and cannot affect the network. Reputation can only be seeded by making a valuable contribution. When I say valuable, I mean by as perceived by already reputable agents. And then valuable condition is also rewarded with tokens, tokens and reputation. The crucial point is that when one is making evaluation of contribution of another, he's actually putting his reputation on stake. It's kind of proof of stake of reputation, or another way to think about it, as a prediction market for reputation, not for tokens. And then if the evaluation was good or bad, will make him gain or lose his reputation. Now, what good and bad is? So good and bad is defined by aligned with the community rather than disaligned with the community. The consequence of that is that it creates a feedback loop towards alignment. Those who were the majority of alignment before will define the axis of alignment. They will, they will gain reputation from that step. In the next step, they will even have, we even compose the larger majority and that will define the, the axis of alignment even strongly, more strongly, which means it creates a feedback loop of alignment. So what happens about the misaligned uh, agents? The misaligned ag agents has the incentive to fork the network, just as you fork code on GitHub, so you can fork a network, a new reputation system, a new token system, and by that you get um, micro-alignment and macro-diversity. That results in, a, if you follow this process, basically this is just exactly how evolution works. And if you just follow the process, the process you get a fractal network of networks. That's how the protocol dynamics look like in a very uh, abstract way. Uh, you can make a contribution. From that contribution, you can get, can get rewarded with tokens and reputation. Once you have reputation, you can make evaluations. And then with this evaluation, now we can evaluate uh, uh, more contributions. And that, it goes on like that. Slightly with more details, again, not too technical, but you can present the whole protocol in a di diagrammatic fashion, which our physicists are very used to. So these are, this, is, this is a dictionary for network collaborator contribution, contributing, evaluating a rotation. It looks like that, something like that. So this is a network. Uh, and then there is an agent who has all of the reputation of that network. And then he's making some contribution. And since he has all the reputation network, he also, he also has all the to tokens of that network. And now there is a new contributor. He's making a new contribution. Now the first uh, agent can evaluate that contribution. And since he has all of the reputation, as, as a result, now the second agent receives some tokens and reputation. Now he can evaluate back the first contribution and maybe the first contributor's token and reputation will grow. And finally, there can be a third contributor right now, but maybe he's, he's already forked the system, so he's, he's part of a new network, and he owns all the reputation there. But then maybe the, the second agent evaluated his contribution, but he's still not the majority, but now also the, the first agent evaluated it, and now he's also getting reputation in the first network. And this process basically can go on and on, 
and you can draw it, you can make diagrams, there is concrete calculation behind it, and you can prove that it's fully uh, stable resilient. Let me quickly show you um, three proof of concept that we've built so far. And there are some more uh, in the pipeline. So basically, th this is a decentralized chess game. So thousands of people can play together one hand against the machine. So you can suggest a move. Yeah, let's see what is better. Okay, that move. And then everyone can see that move and make evaluation of that move. And your evaluation is, of course, weighted by your reputation. If you make a good move, as judged by the community, your reputation will increase. And if you make a bad move, your reputation will be decreased. Finally, at the end of the day, or at the end of the turn, the move with most reputation or most, the most voted move for will be uh, uh, chosen and will be played. Let's see. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's basically how it happens. So that's just a proof of concept. Uh, let me show you another one. Oh. So that's, that's more, more specific, like a decentralized application. You can also ch check it out in chessmate.io. Another, another application we've made uh, more, more towards the decentralized collaborative organization is designing a uh, Chrome extension for Slack so that teams on Slack can collaborate in a decentralized way. So they can submit contribution, they can evaluate each other's contrib contribution, they can gain reputation, tokens, uh, see uh, statistics, and so on. So I'll just skip the rest of that. The last application I want to show you is the most important one. This is a project together with Ethereum. Um, and the idea here is that basically that we want to make a proof of concept, a more deeper proof of concept of these protocols. And, we're, we're, it, and for that, we're looking for a wide participation of the community. This, it's called Curate, and the idea in Curate is really to curate the content on the web. So it's basically a decentralized library. You can add links. You can add links to the library. You can search uh, uh, tags by tags, for example. So let's search with DevCon. Let's see what we get. Uh, we get some result about Augur, uh, MakerDAO, Etc. You can you can vote on the tagging whether the tagging are relevant or not. You can vote about the quality of the links. And for each time you're making a vote, each time you're making a tag, you are basically um, putting your reputation on stake. If the rest of the community agrees with you, your reputation will be increased. If the rest of the community disagree with you, uh, your reputation will be it will decrease. Um, and gradually we're getting a humanly, humanly curated database for the web, specifically here for, this, for the centralized space, but more, more generally anything. You can just, basically you can just make a better search engine by that. Oh, I see the guy that has made this, um, oh, this demo gave two stars for Colony, which means he's gonna lose a lot of reputation because Colony are really awesome. So that's how you add um, links, etc. So let me end by that, um, and just saying, uh, keep calm, nothing is under control. And basically, that uh, the, I would say, gateway for real governance of the central network. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.